how you doing? My name's Ryan, and today I'm reviewing some knockoff Spider-Man No Way Home minifigures. This is a video a lot of you guys requested during my room tour live stream, so I asked you to send me the worst and weirdest Spider-Man knockoff figures you could find, and you guys did not disappoint. As you guys know, I love reviewing knockoff minifigures, so let's get right to it. This first figure comes from Neon Flash 61, and it's actually a big fig, a Spider-Man big fig. This is Spider-Man in his red and black suit. It looks more like a comic book suit than it does the movie figure, but it is strange to see Spider-Man in big fig form. Now, to be fair, some of the print work on this figure is pretty good. The red and black lining's nice, the black pants are nice, the kind of dual molded legs, the logo on the front and back is pretty well done. The eyes have a weird kind of bluish shadow to them, so the white is the highlight and the blue is the shadow. It, I get what they're going for, it's trying to make the eyes more three-dimensional, but it, I'm not sure if it totally works on this figure. I, I still am just very thrown off by a big, bulky Spider-Man figure. I think this works better for Venom than it does for Spider-Man. And now, the big package. This is, uh, I forget how many I actually ordered, but it's a lot of them. Now, a lot of these figures came from AliExpress.com a kind of worldwide Amazon-like site that I've never shopped on before, so I was very nervous that the order wouldn't get here. I'm happy to announce that they got here, if not a little bit late, but they're here, so it's time to review them. We'll start first with Mysterio, looking very elaborate and kind of an upscale version of the Mysterio figure we got from Far From Home. You know, the face print on this figure is noticeably better than most knockoff face prints. The only thing that's off is the color of the plastic for the face, which is a problem a lot of knockoff figures have. It looks fine by itself, but compared to a real figure, it definitely looks more yellowish. This Mysterio figure also has a very unique cape and cowl structure. There's a hard plastic shoulder piece that then has studs to connect a hard plastic cape to. It looks off. I like the idea behind it, but it looks off. What's great about this figure though, once again, is the accessories. They are incredible. We have two unique star magic pieces and two minifigure holding studs in translucent lime green. And I'm not sure that piece actually exists in official Lego, so it's really cool to see here. We also get the ghost-like green mount for the figure, so it looks like it's flying on this puff of green smoke. I believe the comic book figure version of Mysterio has used that before, but we've never seen it for the movie figure, so it's great to see here. As always, compared to the official Mysterio figure, this knockoff is noticeably more complex in print, but I gotta say, this is a really impressive figure in that it does kind of balance all of these design elements into a pretty cohesive package. I wouldn't say it would pass for real, but it's a really solid knockoff, and once again, I'm more than happy to transfer the accessories from this knockoff onto the real figure. Next, how about a knockoff of the Sam Raimi Green Goblin? This is a figure that a lot of collectors love, especially with that green mask. We've never seen that mask mold used again, so let's see how a knockoff handles a modern version of a classic figure. I'm immediately struck by the color of this figure. The original Green Goblin figure is a bright green. This one is more of a, a subdued dark tan green, which is closer to the actual costume. Now, this figure comes with a chest plate that is covering up a really good torso print in my opinion, and because the chest plate has no printing on it itself, I don't think it looks that good, and I think it actually detracts from the full figure. So I'm going to take that off. Now, this figure comes with a lot of really cool features, including a face print that I think every Batman figure should have. One side of the face is the normal Norman Osman face, while the other side has the orange shade over the eyes where they should be to give the mask that orange glow. So you get both versions of the Green Goblin face here, with the orange eyes and with Norman eyes peering through. There's no weird line like Batman has over his actual face. This figure can exist both with and without a mask. That's really cool. And speaking of the mask, it's really elaborate and really well done with some great detail on it. We also get, as always, some great accessories. A brand new pumpkin bomb piece that's a printed orb with some amazing printing on it. There's also a custom glider that really looks fantastic. I'm quite impressed with the custom pieces that knockoff figures have nowadays. 
But man, this Green Goblin figure is incredibly elaborate and really well done. This kind of feels like it should be more of a Comic-Con figure than a figure included in a set. And compared with the original one, I really want LEGO to make an updated version of that original figure if this is what we'd get. But the original Sam Raimi costume was not the only look for Green Goblin in No Way Home. We also have his updated look, the more, well, Willem Dafoe looking goblin without the motorcycle helmet on. And immediately this figure is closer to what I expect a knockoff goblin figure to look like. The face print has some strange line choices under the smile and on the cheeks. For the torso print, this figure uses the same design as the other Green Goblin figure, but it has the purple cloth covering most of that design. And the purple cloth doesn't have a lot of detail in it. You know, there's not a, a lot of line work or texturing on it. So it's kind of like these blobs of purple covering up an otherwise incredibly detailed print. It has a lot of contrast and not in a good way. How about the titular hero himself, Spider-Man? I have three versions in this package. One Tom Holland, one Andrew Garfield, and one Tobey Maguire. We'll start with the Tobey figure first. Given the brighter color palette, this is matching the original, original Lego Spider-Man figure with the bright red before they made the Spider-Man 2 figure with a darker red print. And this is an incredibly busy figure with a lot of contrasting textures, both in the silver webbing and they tried to give the blue accents texture as well. It's visually very overwhelming and looks, well, fake. And one of the weird things that a lot of these new Spider-Man figures have is they come with the normal Spider-Man head, but also a mask piece, kind of like the newer Iron Man helmet with the Spider-Man face printed on it. I think the intention is to have no stud on the top of his head and keep it smooth like the actual Spider-Man. But that's really weird looking and it makes Spider-Man kind of look like a lollipop to some degree. And also, there's no printing on the sides or the back of this helmet piece, so it's just really a face print. So it just looks better with the normal minifigure and not the hood piece. But how about the other two? How about, say, Andrew Garfield? Now, I will admit, out of all the knockoff figures I bought for today, this might be the one I'm most excited for. As you recall, there is an Andrew Garfield Spider-Man figure that exists officially, but it was a Comic-Con exclusive. I think they made like less than 500 of them, so it is incredibly expensive. So I was really curious if a knockoff figure could pull off a good Andrew Garfield Spider-Man. All right, there is quite a bit to like here. The appearance of this figure is really close to the Comic-Con one. The patterning on his legs, his torso, his logo. It all looks pretty solid, I gotta say. I love the face, I love the giant white eyes, it's very Andrew Garfield looking. If it was a little bit brighter and maybe had some thinner black lines for the webbing, I'd be really happy with this figure and I think it would be almost a good consolation if you never got your hands on the, gosh, $10,000 Andrew Garfield Spider-Man minifigure that actually exists. This is a close second. Especially for, what, $2? And the last figure from this package is the Tom Holland Spider-Man. And as knockoff Spider-Man figures go, this is definitely the best of the three so far. It looks really close to a real figure. The face, it's perfect. It's probably the closest we've gotten to a knockoff figure exactly replicating the original face. That I, I just believe that they pulled the original face and put it in this figure. The torso print is incredibly accurate. Overall, this figure is fantastic and... While it wouldn't pass for real, is definitely the best knockoff Spider-Man of the three we've seen so far. For if you count the big fig. But we're not even halfway through these knockoff figures. I still have a whole nother package to go through and a ton of villains to build. Let's not waste any time and open this sucker up. Let's start off with Doctor Strange, fresh off of his amazing second trailer. Seriously guys, that trailer is incredible. And I cannot wait for Multiverse of Madness. Lego, I need more sets for Multiverse of Madness. But as for this Doctor Strange figure, it's a really weird one. We get a pretty nice torso print of the more casual looking Stephen Strange, the outfit that he wears in the film, a really weird leg print with some very bold black lines on the kind of the, the shins, a strange face print that looks kind of like a, a poor man's Firestar toys, not sponsored, just a big fan. One is a wink that looks 
kind of uncomfortable. And the other is a yell that looks really uncomfortable to look at. The cape piece is not the sort of hard rubber that the official cape has. It's a hard plastic and therefore feels wrong. You can't move it or bend it. But there is some nice gold accents on the cape as well. Truly the best part of this is definitely the O for Fox sake mug that the character has in the film. I feel like that's really the only part of this figure I'm going to give to the official one because this figure overall is fine, but not that great. Next up is everyone's second favorite cameo in No Way Home besides, well, the other two Spider-Man, and that's Matt Murdock, Daredevil himself. I'm pretty sure I've seen this exact figure, if not a very close approximation to this figure, kind of floating around eBay years ago, kind of around the time of Daredevil, and it's fine. The face print's kind of laughably bad. The torso print has way too big of black outlines. The hair is oddly large, and you're given the new wand pieces as his cane, but it doesn't even reach the ground when you give him the cane. So yeah, Matt Murdock, pretty bad figure. How about the lizard, a figure we've never seen in Lego form before? I do think this will work better as a big fig, but let's see if they can do a minifigure version of everyone's least favorite Spider-Man villain. Let's just be honest. It's definitely the worst. Compared to the last knockoff lizard figure I reviewed, this one is really good, guys. Like, really, really good. The torso and leg printing is fantastic. I love the way this figure uses the fawn legs as more lizard legs to kind of give it, you know, got that kind of animalistic feel to it. I'm impressed by the rather skinny tail this thing has. It looks kind of weird from the side profile and it's kind of hard to find a way to make this look like perfect, but I think it's better than having a tail that sticks straight down like Rocket Raccoon. The figure looks really, really good. Even the face print, I think, is not only accurate to the lizard, but also really well rendered here. The very wide smile. I think it's smarter to use a face print here than a mask or, you know, a lizard head because the lizard in the Spider-Man movies don't really have a snout, unlike, you know, actual lizards. So, I'm really impressed by this. It, it won't pass for a real figure, but it's a damn good knockoff. Like, really good, guys. Let's hope my optimism carries over to the next figure, a black suit Spider-Man. The torso is a strange design in that it's not really a black and white Spider-Man suit, it's kind of a black and gray Spider-Man suit. And Looking at this figure and comparing it to the other Tobey Maguire figure in this package, I think it's just a desaturated version of the color suit, made with a couple of inverted highlights, but it's almost identical in design. And it's not like the Venom figure where it's a black figure all the way and then white line work on it. It's black and then a gray blob and then white and black on that. I think this is literally just a desaturated version of the other figure in this set. So that's kind of a letdown. This figure also has a really strange looking, I, I think it's supposed to be uh, Tobey Maguire, emo Peter Parker. I'm not sure what that expression is supposed to be, but it looks weird. I guess while we're here, might as well review the color version of this exact same figure. This figure is pulling reference from the Spider-Man 2 figure with that darker red and blue color palette. I think the design definitely works better in color than it did in black and white. There's some weird blue patchwork on the arms that don't quite look right. It makes it look kind of like a, a sleeveless tee Spider-Man. We do get, however, a really fun <laughs> Tobey Maguire face print that pulls inspiration from the train sequence where he's struggling to stop the train. Uh, Firestar Toys, hashtag not sponsored, just a big fan, has an amazing custom face print that also mimics this design. And yeah, I do prefer the Firestar Toys version to this one, but again, this is a dollar figure. I'm not expecting much. I think more so than the other Spider-Man figures so far, this feels the most like a knockoff Spider-Man as opposed to a knockoff Spider-Man figure. You know how like sometimes you see like the fake Spider-Man toys being sold on like the streets of New York? This feels like a Lego figure of a knockoff Spider-Man than a knockoff Spider-Man Lego figure. Now that all that's out of the way, how about a Tom Holland black suit Spider-Man, which is the inverted Spider-Man suit? This print work is incredibly busy and really hard to get your eye to focus on one element of it, which is a common problem amongst knockoff figures. They put too much into it, and this figure is the perfect example of it. Let's take a break from Spider-Man and try a Sandman. Now, because we never got Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3 minifigures, 
This is the first attempt at a movie Sandman minifigure. We have plenty of comic Sandmans, but no movies. And it's a pretty good figure. The first thing that sticks out to me is the hairpiece. There's a small bit of plastic protruding off the top of it, which is probably just from the mold or breaking this plastic off of the sheet that it's probably molded onto. It's just extra plastic, which means, again, quality control, lower price to make it lower quality figure. The print work on the arms on one side is really good. The sand side is quite nice. On the other, rather than doing a cap sleeve where it's a dual color on the actual piece itself, they tried to print the flesh onto the arm. It looks pretty bad. The first face print looks pretty generic. The alternate side with sand coming out of his eye is kind of gut-wrenching, really sad looking. I think the Sandman figure might be the worst so far because it kind of had the lowest ask. It's make a human with a little bit of sand coming out of him and they couldn't even do that right. How about a character that didn't even show up in No Way Home? Scorpion, like comic book style Scorpion with the green suit and the tail behind him. There is a Scorpion in the MCU, but he hasn't really shown up outside of a cameo here or there. We've never really gotten a Scorpio and we thought that he'd be maybe a sixth member of the Sinister Six, but they didn't really do that. So now we have this weird comic book Scorpion figure, but is it any good? The answer is a resounding, eh, this figure is weird. Weird smooth head with a weird face print, a bewildering tail build that doesn't even resemble a scorpion's tail, a weird amount of extra pieces, a throwaway green scorpion that just comes with this figure, but it's oddly fascinating to look at. It's not so bad that I need to avert my eyes, nor is it so good that I want to put it on my Marvel board. It's just bewildering. And for that, it's a resounding eh. Let's get back to film accurate characters with Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. This one's way too dark. It's like four or five shades darker than it needs to be. And the amount of detail on the webbing and the face kind of feels like it's a, a hybrid of the Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield Spider-Man figures. It doesn't look like either, to be honest. The Andrew Garfield face print is pretty good with a very faint mustache and beard line but that really can't save an otherwise pretty bad figure. Way too dark, way too busy, and not that accurate to be honest. Let down. How about the Green Goblin, which just from looking at the pieces in here, is really trying to be a replica of the original Sam Raimi Green Goblin figures with that bright green mask and bright green torso. But how does it stack up against the real thing? This figure is a weird mix of the almost over-designed new Goblin and the more simplistic older one. At a first glance, this looks pretty close to the original, but upon closer inspection, you see there's a lot more line work and busyness to this figure. The mask is close, with the mold being pretty spot on, but the print work as a dead giveaway. The gold eyes are fine, but the teeth on the original were silver and they didn't include a black outline. The black outline and the white teeth on the new one makes it look kind of silly. The glider is kind of stupid looking, if you ask me. It feels more so like the Dane DeHaan Amazing Spider-Man 2 glider that was weirdly techy for no reason, then the more sleek and simplistic Sam Raimi glider. And since we have, I guess, two copies now of an amazing new glider mold in these knockoff figures, this one by comparison just looks, yeah, stupid. The smaller orange pumpkin bomb is definitely appreciated, as well as the fact that we get a Norman Osborn face along with the mask and head. The face print is horrible looking, but the hair is really good. Let's keep with the Sam Raimi theme and move on to Doc Ock, the only Doc Ock knockoff in this entire collection. There's a couple floating around online, and I thought this one looked the best. Was I right? I appreciate the relative simplicity of this figure's print. It doesn't really go for too much, but the overall figure has a weird shine to it that screams cheap plastic that immediately says knockoff. The face print also screams fake with incorrect line width and a pretty cartoony design. The tentacles themselves are pretty flimsy and the ends of the tentacles are a bit too wide in my opinion. I'm not really let down by this figure because we already have so many great Doc Ock figures, both from the movie and also from the comics. But you know who hasn't had a great figure of them yet? Electro. Can this redeem the pretty bad and blue Electro minifigures? The short answer is no, not really. The torso is way too complicated to the point where it just is visual noise. 
even the legs have way too much on them. Also, the normal face print looks pretty weird to me, but I think the electric face print looks pretty darn good, and the helmet piece is close to perfect, minus a couple bits of plastic sticking off the top. If LEGO were to make a comic book accurate electro figure with this helmet, we'd be in business. I'd buy that. But for this figure in this iteration, not that great. Might even be worse than the other electro figures. And that's saying something. And that's sad. But how about another Spider-Man figure? This is the Iron Spider-Man suit with the arms. I stand corrected. This is actually the integrated Spider-Man suit, but with the arms. Weird, weird choice there, guys. Really weird choice. I do appreciate the shininess of the gold arms, but the print itself is kind of lacking, especially in the face. This just lends credence to my theory that the other integrated suit knockoff just used a real Spider-Man head, because in my mind, this is what a knockoff Spider-Man head would look like. How about the Spider-Man Far From Home red and black suit in minifigure form and not big fig form? This figure is oddly accurate to the real one. It's not identical, but it's pretty darn close. And it includes probably a piece that I don't think LEGO would ever actually make. It's a Tom Holland face print with a bit of blood going down his side. While incredibly accurate to the film, I don't think LEGO would actually make this print. I think they refrain from showing a lot of blood in their figures, if any blood. So while I love that we have this, this might be more of a collector figure than an actual one that would be released in sets. And finally, the Vulture, for some reason. Again, there are some figures here that aren't in the movie, and I really wish Vulture was part of the Sinister Six. Now, there are a lot of pieces in this bag, so I actually have to build the whole Vulture wingsuit, so stand by. As Vulture minifigures go, this one's fine. It's overly complicated, has too many lines on it, but is accurate to the character. Where this knockoff shines, though, is the actual wingsuit build. Granted, there were no instructions for it, so I kind of had to just figure it out based on one reference image, but it's a darn good build. It's the sleekest and smallest version of the MCU Vulture wings we've had so far. I'm really impressed by this build considering it's brand new. There's no Lego basis for this suit outside of taking the inspiration and arguably the mistakes of the previous builds. Wow, I'm actually really impressed the more I look at this build. It's a little bit flimsy with the two uh, circular turbines, but the wings themselves, the construction of it, the printing on it, yeah, this is a really good build suit. At the end of the day, these knockoff No Way Home minifigures might not have as many amazing accessories to give to my real figures. They might not have as amazing of prints, or there might not be as many hilariously bad, but also amazingly good figures. A lot of them are in the middle, but what's good is really good. I'm quite a big fan of the first Andrew Garfield Spider-Man figure. I think the lime green goblin is pretty fantastic without the chest guard and shoulder pads. The glider is incredible. The vulture wingsuit is really well done. And even the lizard figure was a pretty big surprise for me. It was darn good. I would hope LEGO uses this as inspiration from when they make an actual lizard figure. But what do you guys think? What do you think of these knockoff No Way Home figures? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want me to do a round two of these figures, send me any links you have for knockoff No Way Home minifigures, and I'll do my best to review them. And if you haven't done so yet, be sure to vote for LEGO Mythbusters on LEGO Ideas, linked below. And as always, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching.